Okay. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another episode of On the Wrist from Off the Cuff. Today, we'll be talking about the new for 2016 Seiko Turtle reissue, specifically the blue model, uh, which is the SRP773. So a little bit about Seiko's history. Um, they were founded in 1881, Japanese origin, of course, and now they have factories throughout Asia. They cover all market segments from entry level to um, very high end uh, as far as their exclusivity goes. Now we're reviewing a dive watch and some things to remember when looking at a dive watch, you know, we want to look for water resistance, um, you know, normally through a screw down crown, something that's tough, legible, has a dive bezel um, and, you know, preferably a dive extension um, on the bracelet. All right. So this is the SRP773 um, Turtle, which is, you know, kind of lovingly been considered the turtle reissue because it is definitely uh, a homage to the original Seiko Turtles. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. So under the lights, you can see that the blue is definitely, uh, it, it's going to look a lot more vibrant under these lights, but I'd say it's a lot more subdued um, in regular lighting situations. But I'm actually happy even under uh, more harsh lights, the tone of blue is still uh, very nice. Uh, so I'm really happy with that uh, off the bat. So. The street price for these watches right now, it, you know, it, it really can vary because it is so limited and it's kind of still in the early release um, availability. So, I mean, I've seen them go, you know, f around f from, you know, 350 all the way upwards of, you know, even beyond $500, especially for the blue model with the bracelet because it's just a little bit harder to find, less common as far as what's uh, being stocked right now. So the case size is a 44.3 uh, diameter and the height is 13.4 millimeters. You, we have a stainless steel brushed uh, and polished case, as you can see, very nice. And uh, the crystal is the mineral hardlex crystal and it is a flat crystal, as you can see. Okay, the, as far as the bezel and crown go, the bezel is, of course, 120 clicks. And I'd say, honestly, this is probably the only non-improvement versus the SKX. I think out of the box, SKX actually has a um, slightly tighter, less hollow feeling bezel. And I think a lot of it just has to do with the scale of the bezel itself because um, it's a slightly smaller. Um, not that this is a bad feeling uh, bezel action. It's just, you know, in comparison and especially since there's so many aftermarket options that really take the SKX to another level. Um, you know, I, I'm a bit spoiled uh, as far as kind of that entry level uh, Seiko uh, bezel action. Um, but nonetheless, it's still 120 clicks, very little play, lines up very nicely. And, you know, it still has the uh, nice little hard lex layer over the pip there at 12. And uh, it definitely, it has the matte aluminum finish, as you can see. And then the crown is screw down, of course, but unsigned, which is, you know, a little bit of a letdown, but I think uh, kind of the aesthetic of the watch, if there was gonna be one that, that had an unsigned crown, I think it's nice that it's, you know, a more retro model. So it, it does uh, suit the watch. Um, pretty well as well. The movement is uh, Seiko's 4R36. It's hacking and hand windable, um, which is nice. And, you know, definitely it's been out for a while. So uh, you've, you've probably had some experience in other models. I got to say it's definitely a workhorse. It's essentially a hacking and hand winding uh, 7S26. Um, the case back is solid um, and stamped and with um, also some some etching as well. So, you know, the Tsunami logo is nicely stamped and then, you know, all the stats and everything there, the Prospects X um, are all etched in. Now, as far as the dial goes, you know, a closer look, you'll see that it has applied indices. You know, it has a very dark blue 
um, coloring with um, the matte finish. It has a day date complication at three. Um, there are, you know, polished, uh, as you can see, the polished and uh, painted hands. The, on the second hand, the second half there with the ball end is painted, so it, it blends in uh, to the dial a little bit more and, and uh, helps it to look less cluttered, which is nice. Definitely a nice touch there. Um, the Seiko, and then as far as Loom goes, it has Seiko's proprietary Luma Bright as well, which is very nice and thickly applied. Hopefully the camera can pick that up. Um, definitely great loom application and you'll you'll see that uh, when we get to the loom shot so as you can see um, on the dial there it does um, it is uh, 200 meters water resistant um, and it, it does rate the divers 200 meters um, wording there which means that it meets or exceeds the ISO standards to carry that text so that's always a nice feature to have um, the lugs are 22 millimeter lugs and they are drilled which is very nice unfortunately on the back um, the bracelet actually you know it, it's pretty much only made for a watch with drilled lugs um, which we we have seen from Seiko's with drill lugs before so there's no new surprise but it does make putting the bracelet back on a little bit harder um, although it's it is definitely very easy to take off okay and these um, the links are actually very nice and solid and they're held together by a pin and double collar connecting system. So essentially instead of having one pin in the center link, there are actually, uh, I'm sorry, uh, one collar in the center link, uh, as you've seen in some other models, it'll actually have the pin goes through and then there's two pins, one on each side, which is a little bit harder um, as far as changing the bracelet goes. I didn't have too much trouble with it. Um, it's basically once I realized the system that it was and I was kind of prepared to deal with it that way It definitely made it a lot easier um, After that and, and I I think you know, the only bad thing is the pieces are very small um, So you do worry about losing them. So just make sure you know You're, you're you have a steady hand and a clean workspace uh, when you are sizing the bracelet so as you can see, the links are brushed, solid links. You know, we got solid end links, you know, beautifully crafted, very nice and tight tolerances, I have to say. Very impressed. Um, this is probably the best OEM bracelet I've seen um, on a Seiko. And it's not the first in this design. I just think that they really killed it with its execution and, and really overbuilt it um, to a very nice spec uh, to really match this uh, really great cushion case. So as you can see, we have the signed Seiko clasp. It's stamped, um, you know, fold over push button, and then also has that nice little diver's extension uh, which is a little hard to pop off uh, with the gloves on, but you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, it's there, it's, it, and it uh, it does it works. It's not as quite as sexy as some of the other systems out there. You know, the the Marine Master style um, ratcheting clasp would have been nice, but you know, this is a 20 millimeter uh, taper versus tapering down to 18 millimeters. So still very nice. So let's go ahead and get this on the wrist. All right, so as you can see, you know, this watch, although the specs are quite large, I think this actually might be the largest watch I've reviewed, um, it doesn't wear like the largest watch. Um, you know, it wears honestly a lot more like a 42 millimeter, and you know, the specs can definitely be deceiving. Um, the style, you know, it really screams that retro vintage vibe. You know, even if you don't recognize the, the iconic look, you can really tell that this is a tool watch and it means business. Um, it is really extremely comfortable in, sight of, in spite of the specs. And, uh, you know, you can kind of see why here um, with the, the way that the case tapers there. It just gives you so much range of motion. It doesn't get in the way, you know, and of course with the nice crown that's tucked away there, um, it, it really is a solid 
solid piece very comfortable great on nato um i actually had this on an uh, admiralty gray nato it's pretty much like my favorite nato color and it looked great um honestly but the um the bracelet it's just so nice it just uh seems to be a waste to to not wear it on the bracelet so i think it definitely looks great and and really uh fits uh the the watch nicely so let's go ahead and get a nice little resting wristy there so you can kind of see get an idea of how it looks out in the wild um so the model variants you know of course they have the black and white model um there's one that's black with gold accents there's a pepsi um bezel option which interestingly actually has a black dial versus um on the skx 009 uh has a very dark blue dial so that, that was interesting and, and I think it actually is a very cool aesthetic so I'm definitely looking forward to seeing one of those out in the wild and uh, they actually there are actually two new um, releases that are uh, should be coming out shortly um, where there is a Batman theme which basically is like a Pepsi except um, it's black and then the red part is blue and then there's a Coke model which basically has the red tickers but then uh the the black theme so and actually there's a limited edition with a sunray blue dial with red accents um that's coming out also um which uh, definitely looks really cool but it looks like it's going to be pretty limited in release but i definitely do hope to get my hands on one Okay, so comparable models, you know, you could compare it, I'd say, since it's a larger Seiko, you could compare it to the Seiko Sumo, you know, um, but I think the proportions are, are better on this watch. You know, I think the Sumo with the larger case, but the smaller bracelet, it just doesn't flow as well. That's something that's kind of um, kept me away from, from uh, that watch, and I know it's a watch, you know, people love it. It's, it's a cult classic, has a better movement, um, but for me... I just uh, feel like the, the turtle really um, has it beat. And then um, another comparable model from, from Seiko would be, you know, the Seiko Superior Stargate. Specifically the Stargate 2 with, an, you know, updated movement, which I actually have here. So we can compare size-wise. Um, and this one actually has um, an aftermarket bezel. From Yabokis. So it actually, you know, normally it has, you know, the stainless steel Stargate style bezel. Um, now it, it kind of has a cleaner coin edge bezel with, um, you know, I'd say that the aesthetic is, is definitely a lot more classic now and, and less polarizing. And as you can see, size wise, they are very similar, um, but the Stargate wears a little bit nicer, I'd say, uh, as far as, you know, kind of sleek lines and details wise, I mean, the um the finishing is very 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 nice so case finishing wise i mean you know for less money you can get a stargate and have something that case wise you know has the drilled lugs um that's definitely on par uh these you know the, i'd say the big drawback with the stargate would be you know at least in comparison to the um to the new turtle is the bracelet i mean it's very comfortable as you can see you know, nice short links there, but in comparison to the turtle's bracelet, it definitely, you know, leaves a lot to be desired as far as, you know, um, the build quality. But, you know, you, you take these watches off of their factory bracelet, you put it on a NATO, you know, or a rubber or leather, and, you know, it really evens the playing field. So, um, definitely a nice piece, and I'd say it, it is pretty comparable. So... And then, of course, um, another model that I think that is uh, very comparable would be the recently released Ray 2. So I will definitely be setting up a battle between these watches, so make sure to look out for that. Um, and just as kind of a catalyst here, let's get out the infamous SKX 009. This is my modded version. Um, from Artifice Horror Works. So as you can see, size-wise, you know, not a huge difference. Um, you know, the, the SKX line definitely has uh, smoother lines uh, that I think, you know, are less retro. 
um, but equally as timeless. And then uh, just a small update here. I actually did update the clasp to the Marine Master clasp. So it has the ratcheting, which is pretty cool. Um, so the dive extension, nice, very nice upgrade. It would be, I'd be really interested to, to do that for the turtle at some point, but I would need to find an aftermarket bracelet that tapered down to 18 millimeters. So, but I just wanted to kind of show you guys as far as size wise, you know, it's not that much bigger than the SKX. So if, you know, that's one of your concerns, you think that it's, you know, it might be too big. I think, you know, uh, you, you'll still definitely be very happy. And for those of you that thought the SKX was a little bit small, um, at least, you know, wore a little bit small if you have a larger wrist, you know, I think the turtle is definitely the answer and you can get a lot of what's great about the SKX um, here in the turtle. So what we'll do is we'll take it off the wrist and we shall take a look at the loom. And you know what? Let's do this. Let's get the Stargate back out. Although it is modded, it's just the bezel. So the loom is still the same. So let's uh, just kind of take a look at, just so you can have a comparison, uh, you know, for the loom shot. Then what I'll do is I will charge these guys up. Black light. And all right, as you can see, Loom looks great. I'm actually getting a warning from my camera that the uh, battery is about to die. So we'll definitely end it here and just uh, say, hey, thanks guys for watching and please keep an eye out for um, my next battle video with the Ray 2 versus the Seiko Turtle reissue. Thanks guys. Bye. <laughs>